Hello, welcome to Creatives in Lockdown in Conversation, part of the Wandsworth Arts Fringe in 2021. Uh, today we're talking to photographer and art director Jansen Cardoso. Welcome, Jansen. Hello, hello, thank you. How are you? Um, it's a big pleasure to, to talk with you now. And thank you. I have this opportunity to talk about my, my work as well. Thank you. You're so welcome. We can't wait to get started. Um, so as everyone has seen the video, Johnson has got an amazing uh, work with diversity, inclusion, and uh, he had a very colorful upbringing. So perhaps, Justin, we can start with your upbringing and how your background has influenced your creative career. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from a small town in, in, in Brazil. Uh, in exactly in the border with Peru and Colombia. Wow. It's uh, Amazon, that area. And so I, uh, Benjamin Constant, it's a small town there. And I grew up there and uh, that area is a particular area because you can have a lot of influence, indigenous influ influence and uh, uh, Peruvian and Colombia as well. So I grew up listening in Spanish and indigenous in near and and the indigenous culture have a lot of influence there in food, uh, art, and that's it. And uh, I remember we discussed a little bit about the local uh, traditions and the local cultures and the festivals and how that might have influenced your desire to create. Can you talk a little bit about that uh, for our audience in London? Um, I'm uh, in the indigenous in my area, uh, Chikunas. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, this kind of indigenous tic called Chikunas. They, uh, I think they, they are the most uh, artist indigenous. So we can see a lot of things uh, from they. So uh, um, like uh, what I can say, um, parties, uh, for example, they, when they, the girl is young and then start to be a, a woman, they yes. have a party called uh, Festa da Menina Moça. Oh my I God, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so yeah. For, for our audience who doesn't uh, know, Festa da Menina Moça translates a party of the young young lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this party can, can go to many days. So the, wow. uh, don't have one specific uh, date because uh, the bodies uh, can change all the time. So you can have this along the year or for weeks. So this is an interesting thing from that. And then uh, in Brazil, in all Brazil, you have uh, in this time. So it's because this I'm using this kind of. I know you're wearing such a colorful T-shirt. Yeah, it's a colorful T-shirt. Usually we use in a June party or Saint June party. I don't know how can I translate. And then uh, in my childhood, I usually in this time we have different kind of uh, parties, dancing from uh, from indigenous culture. In in my town, uh, when I I I was young in my childhood i went to this festival and then i watched it all these kind of parties and dancings you have one kind of uh theater yes. open theater in the in the in the garden and then different groups can uh do this kind of a mix with theater and dance mm -hmm. so we have uh uh, Lampion, uh, it's, a, um, it's a character from Northeast because my area, Amazon, have influence from people from Northeast because in the past, in the, a lot of uh, Brazilians from Northeast went to Amazon to live there. 
because yes. uh, uh, Tempo Aureo da Borracha, how can I say in English? It was uh, the rub, the golden age of rubber yes, trade. Yes, yeah, exactly. So my ancestors is from Northeast with indigenous, so I'm a mix with Northeast people from Brazil with indigenous. So That is so exotic. Uh, so we have a lot of influence from these people as well, not, not just indigenous. Of course, uh, Portuguese people too, because in that time I have a Portuguese uh, living there as yes. well. So um, this party have all this influence. So you have a Portuguese uh, dancing, yes. uh, indigenous dancing and uh, Northeast uh, dancing. So. Uh, Lampião is a character from Northeast, and then in this time we have uh, dancing and theater uh, uh, talking about uh, her li his life and then yes. everything uh, around him. So yeah. it's one kind of dance. So we have a Portuguese dance and native. So uh, I, in my childhood, I, I spent all the night. Uh, uh watching this kind of thing so this for me it's uh i can remember it's my first um uh, for me my first contact with the, with culture uh, and then i think uh, uh, influence i have influence from this time as well that's Since amazing do you know how i imagine your mind your brain it's like a a colorful um you know, mosaic of cultures and uh, images and sounds, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. I, I it's forgot African as well, African as yes. well. I remember that mm. ones have, because in Amazon don't have too much uh, black people, so they did this kind of uh, Africans parties, uh, dance, they trying to look like a, Today is not a, is not a good thing to. Today to is do. not acceptable anymore. Yes. Yeah, because they they put uh, they they try to be dark like yes. black people and then try to do this kind of dance and theater. Mm. So that's it. I understand, but you you have traveled so much, and uh, I know you came to London. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, from our conversations that London has has played a pivotal, pivotal part in your career. Um, you made some very important discoveries in London. Uh, can you talk to us about that time you spent in London? Yeah, I, I went to London in 2013. Yes. And then I lived there two and a half a year. So I work in a charity uh, and then I was graph designer because I'm a graph designer too, not just a photographer and video maker. I mean, sorry, so, I have to excuse myself and not just a photographer and art director, <laughs> not just, you know, you have an amazing work. Anyway, I get yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went to, uh, to working in this charity in London, so I I had amazing experience in another country. I I went to to have this experience and and uh, improve my English, so I can speak her better now because I lived it there, and then I and and was a really interesting time because I it was the first time I, I left my country. Uh, to live in another one, and then I have a lot of um, what I can say. I compare all the time uh, my culture with a uh, British culture because we we have we 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 do everything in another way. So everything in Brazil you can you can do. Uh, for example. Um, everything is more flexible so you, you this give us more uh, op, uh, more possibilities and then in in london uh, is different everything have a, a time to do or more or less 
um, uh, everything wor works and go in a different way. So for, for me, it, it was uh, really important to understand me better and then, uh, and then of course, uh, have influences from this time as well now. Yes, I remember also um, a project that you developed in London where you uh, did videos of local people in their in their local environments. And mm -hmm. tell, tell us about that project because I found it very interesting because our festival is, you know, it's one's worth festival and it's quite a local festival, even though it it's online now. So, you know, everyone can watch it. But uh, tell us about that project in specific in London. Yeah, I started to do this kind of thing because when I lived in London, I tried to understand the people better. So the way I I used to do this, uh, I I started to do um, uh, videos called uh, My London, and then I invited someone to from London to show me a particular place and uh, not exactly tourist place but uh, particular ones and then i started to do this and then it was a really good time as well so i uh, uh, and then i because i i worked in a charity they this charity had a coffee coffee shop and then um and then every friday night had uh musicians uh, uh, doing the shows there so i met a lot of ones and then i, I did as well a uh, videos with this musician so i invited to the most uh, musicians i like and then i started to do as well uh, at the windowsill and i i record this person near the the window and mm -hmm. then it was a other kind of um, video in my YouTube channel. So Amazing. I did my my London and uh, at the windowsill. That's amazing. And we, uh, you know, if people are wondering how they can see it, uh, we're gonna leave um, information how to access uh, Jensen's work uh, by the end of the interview. So mm -hmm. Jensen, we invited you as well because your talent and also. Uh, because of how you coped uh, during the pandemic and how you adapted. And this is uh, the core of our uh, program for One's Worth Arts Fringe. So you, can you talk to us about your experience during the pandemic, how, uh, you know, how you adapted? I know you are in a good place now, so we'd love mm -hmm. to hear more how you navigated mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. I I started uh, this pandemic time uh, with without uh, jobs because I had one by the how can I say I forgot the word in English when someone they made people states, redundant or uh, they said sorry but you you can't uh, stay with you now so I know. Uh, uh, and not. then I it was it was a really bad time because I couldn't I I didn't know uh, it's it's the first pandemic time I have in my life so I don't know if I have uh, if I will have a job or not so it was a really bad time but in Brazil we when you don't have job you have assistance from from the government so. I spent like March to September looking for a job, and I, and then I didn't. And, and then just in September, I started in another place called Pipoca Popcorn. Uh, they they us they usually works with artists in, in carnival uh, and doing events like uh, Smogers Burger in in São Paulo. So I started there, and then. I but uh, first uh, had this job. I I was really think about what I will do, what uh, if I will continue my career or not. So it was a time um, a, a difficult time, but I, I, I had a lot of time to think about uh, 
my life and in my in, about my future. So I I try to to do a lot of uh, things, but um, today I I I have I'm working up in Pipoca in another job as well called Aspi. It's a um, uh, in immobiliary. <laughs> it's a <laughs> so it's a it's a luxury estate agent, isn't it? It's um, yes. Yeah. I I'm, I'm a graphic designer, and I uh, and then that's my work. But it's possible have this kind of job because today we we do a uh, homework, so it's not possible yes. in the past. Well, is that this is a good thing when, when you have a pandemic time. Yes. <laughs> and then you can have two jobs and try to work well. Yeah. Because people can, at the moment, you don't have too much jobs, so mm -hmm. it's possible to have this. Because of the events event. industry, isn't it? There is no yeah. events going on. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we trying uh, to do another project and show to the, the brands, but mm -hmm. at the time you don't have exactly uh, post, uh, uh, events in the future at, at the moment not that we don't have uh, we, we don't know when you you'll be yes. back so Johnson, you said during that period that you had no job and you had a lot time a lot of time to think and evaluate your choice of career and you know um so what kept you going how did you cope on your day to day and how did you manage to did you continue to create during that time um how was that particular time for you did you continue to to create or how did you navigate that particular time i i didn't anything because uh i can't take pictures uh, many people start to do uh, like uh, from Zoom or yes, uh, uh, taking pictures. But for me, uh, this is not photography. It's something like uh, I don't know what is that, but I don't like this this way. So I couldn't take pictures. And then I I was uh, studying uh, art direction uh, like a post graduation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I finished this, and then after that I I couldn't do anything. I I started to think I have a podcast uh, because I uh, I thought uh, we ha I have this time and I I and I don't know what I will do, and I don't know how how can I construct a way to. Uh, from here to the future. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I started to think, why I, why I, why I, I, I take this situation and do something like, and then I thought to do a a podcast uh, where I would like to interview different play, people from different areas, and then. Uh, trying to build this new uh, way. So I, uh, my idea was interview an uh, economist or someone have a, um, like a businessman, mm -hmm. how, how they, they build that, their um, work. So I, it was an idea I, I couldn't start it because I started work. But yeah. it's my idea to continue this, this, um, and um, I hope soon because I, I I I thought I have to finish my project other colors we we will talk yes. about about yes and then I have finished first to start another one. That's good. So you know, in a way, we are very glad that you didn't deviate from your path because. Uh, the work you're doing with other colors is, is stunning. It is, is the reason why we are, you know, talking to you today. So talk about other colors. It's uh, it's such an inspiring, inclusive 
and diverse project. And um, just tell us about why you started and what you aim to achieve with other colors. Mm -hmm. uh, when I left London five years ago, I came to Brazil and then I, I saw on Instagram different projects up, uh, about bodies, naked bodies, uh, different uh, photographers doing this kind of thing. Uh, Brazilians love take pictures, so it's easy to see someone uh, on Instagram show uh, the body or not everybody, but you can, a lot of people do this, so we it's easy to invite someone and uh, would like to do this kind of kind of photos so i i start to think because uh was my uh, uh in the past i i thought to do this kind of uh thing but uh i couldn't see their way to to start so when i came back when i left london and came to sao paulo i started to invite people uh, on instagram to to do this kind of photos so i started other colors the idea was to to separate uh, naked bodies with sex or porn things so yes. my idea to to show the body in a natural way in the uh, the the person in the house doing something and then after that i thought uh, if I take pictures just people in the house, um, it's not enough. So I started to 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 do first an interview with the person, and yes. from this interview, I had an idea. And then uh, uh, today, I I I called uh, it's a, a psychological project because yes. I work, I talk with the person, and I and then I try to see something from uh, his life uh, yes everybody have a, a story my body have one story ca called uh, uh, say something so i started to see something from different people yes uh, how can i uh, what i can talk about if so uh, and then i started to see uh, uh i would like when i saw uh these other projects i i thought i i i would like to to take different uh bodies take pictures from different bodies so uh, yes i i i i i need uh, fat people thin people or uh, indigenous or black people i, I would like to do i would yes. i do like to talk in, uh, different stories different bodies so the idea today today other colors that's it other colors that uh, other stories not the the story you can see in the magazine usually yes or uh, doing a pose uh, no it's, uh, the idea is natural way so yes that's it other colors it's about uh, the colors from inside everybody have colors have stories to to tell us yes and this is what we really love because uh you know people can visit your website uh afterwards um but there is a, a variety of subjects and and the stories are so compelling you can really feel uh, the personality and even the struggles and even the desires uh, that that person has in a very emotional connecting way uh, so we you know it's very easy to connect even if you don't relate to those uh, subjects I felt that especially uh, so you know it's an amazing for the viewer uh, for us was incredible to see that work not only beautiful in technique uh, because you are a very good photographer, obviously, um, but also the subjects. Uh, so it was is an incredible project. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and this project, uh, I, I usually I say it's like see myself in the mirror because yeah. 
every people have something I I can see myself as well. So uh, I don't feel comfortable uh, 100% with my body or, or about my, my uh, I, I think I can, today I can be myself uh, more than in, in the past. So I feel more comfortable with myself as well. Uh, and this project uh, did this with me. That's amazing. I love that because it's the effect that you are having in your subjects, but also the effect it's having on you as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. So, Jansen, just so we can wrap up the session, um, what's your goal uh, with maybe other colors or as a, as a creative? What else do you want to achieve after this? Um, I'd like to to finish other colors as <laughs> soon as possible. I'd like to do a, a, a photo book uh, with all this. I think I have uh, near 100 uh, photo shoots. So it's near 100 person I, I took, I did the photo shoots. So I have a lot of um, uh, work to do with this so i'd like to do a book and yes. then uh, exhibition uh, maybe in london maybe i don't know i'd like to to show to everybody my my work uh, and and i have four years doing this so i have a lot of things to do so but i'm waiting a uh, better time to do this and then after that, I would like to do um, the, the podcast called uh, Ruminando. Ruminando is uh, it's the sound uh, the, cow, the cow do. Yes, we, we say the same, so you're ruminating. Ruminating, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, ruminating I, I, ideas, so. It's, yes. It's that, That's that a very interesting um, title. Yeah, yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> ah, so ruminating. That's amazing. Well, Jensen, um, I think we're getting to the, the end of our interview. And I just want to thank you so much for, you know, talking to us from your apartment in Sao Paulo. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And to our audience, if you'd like to see Jensen's work, other colors and many other projects, you can visit him on Instagram. It's here in the captions, uh, just follow him. And yeah. if you want to read about um, Jansen's work, we have a story about him on our website. You can follow here as well. Uh, Jansen, it was amazing to have you here. Do you have, would you like to compliment, to say anything else to, to our audience? Yeah, so uh, my Instagram is uh, Jansen Cardoso. And then th there you can see my videos uh, from uh, London's time. Uh, you can see my uh, my works, uh, design works, my my jobs from art directions. So uh, I have another profile, uh, and then you can follow as well uh, other colors. But go first to Jansen Cardoso, and, and there you, uh, you can see. Uh, other colors project as well. It's amazing, Jansen. Thank and, you so much. Sorry, you say. And uh, I'd like to uh, say thank you for you because it's a really good opportunity to show, uh, and more people knows about my my work. And then I hope soon I have this opportunity in, in person as well. Definitely, we have to meet again when the pandemic is over, <laughs> very soon. Yes, yes, oh, I hope so. Oh, Justin, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your uh, festivals in June with your very colorful um, shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I started to do this until today. Yes. And drink a lot and uh, try to be happy in this time, in home, yeah. at home. Definitely. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, this is it from uh, from Johnson today. Uh, if you want to uh, 
save this video or if you'd like to share. Uh, it's also available on the Wandsworth Arts Fringe uh, website and in our YouTube as well. So for us, uh, thank you so much. Have a lovely day and, uh, you know, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.